Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of The Warped Ones, a Japanese crime dramatic thriller from 1960 that was directed by Koryoshi Kurahara. Now this is not a name that sticks out to many people nowadays, but he was an impressive filmmaker. I have a playlist on my channel for uh, 200 Japanese film recommendations from the 1920s to the present day. I'll include a link to that in the, the description box. Uh, it's a playlist of 200 Japanese film recommendations. And Kurahara had three movies that made that list. Antarctica from 1983, The Flame of Devotion from 1964, and The Warped Ones from 1960. So this is the plot synopsis. A juvenile delinquent gets out of prison and immediately embarks on a rampage of untethered anger. Most of it is directed at the girlfriend of the journalist who helped send him up, but shot with the same bebop bravado that Godard was experimenting with half a world away, the anarchic descent into amoral madness that is the Warped One sounded a lost generation's cry for help and was one of the films that kicked off Japan's cinematic 60s with a bang. That's the Criterion synopsis for you. So the three main characters in this film are basically uh, our main character, okay, who's kind of a degenerate. You have a nutty young woman and his buddy, who basically assist him in committing various crimes. All three of these characters are definitely warped, <laughs> okay? They're nihilistic and probably sociopathic. They engage in pickpocketing, car theft, harassment, physical assault, sexual assault, robbery, kidnapping, etc. So these are not likable people at all. And there's also very little backstory or psychological development of these main characters. So The Warped Ones has this difficult task of maintaining your interest while using unsympathetic protagonists. And I think it succeeds at doing this for two main reasons. First of all, the interesting character interaction is important for a film like this. One example that comes to mind is Takashi Miike's version of Graveyard of Honor, which had a disgraceful lead character, but was still fascinating to watch because the focus was on how that character impacted the lives of other people. And the same is true, really, with this movie. You know, there are some interesting scenarios that give the Warped Ones some depth and multidimensionality. So, for example, there's a girl who is assaulted by our protagonist, our protagonist, and she later describes how her fiancé is dealing with the fallout of that event. And even more fascinating, this woman confronts our main character multiple times throughout the rest of the film after he attacks her early on, because she needs a sense of closure from that event. And as a viewer, you're not quite sure how this conflict is going to pan out, the way it's presented. And I think most of the dramatic meat of the Warped Ones is driven by that specific dynamic between those characters. I think it's pretty interesting. Second of all, this is filmed with so much energy and style that it proves to be pretty entertaining to watch, all right? The criminal behavior immediately begins right at the start of the film, and it just keeps going. <laughs> I mean, there's there's high-speed driving and running from place to place with our, our dubious trio of characters causing chaos wherever they go. Pacing is very brisk, and the runtime is only like 1 hour and 15 minutes. It's like 75 minutes long, which is quite short. The movie begins with some solid old-school jazz music, and that music is used throughout. There's actually a scene where practically everyone at, a jam as a, at this jazz bar is, like, entranced with the music. So much so that they're barely paying attention to, like, anything that's happening around them until the music stops. And th I thought that was a really cool scene. <laughs> you don't really see it that uh, very much in film. So this, this movie has a lot of interesting stuff going on visually and uh, in terms of audio. Aesthetically, the movie is very good. It's shot in black and white. I like how the camera kind of moves around the characters. The camera moves quite a bit in this, which I like. 
And it's nice for like a non-Japanese viewer to watch films from this particular era, especially this one, because it captures 1960s urban Japan very well. Now, I know some people may have a little bit of difficulty enduring the main characters in this film, but I really enjoyed the warp ones. Uh, it's available on Amazon streaming as well as DVD. Uh, there's, there was a Criterion Eclipse set. I think uh, number 28 is the Eclipse series set number. It was called The Warped World of Koryoshi Kurahara. So yeah, check this one out. I thought it's a pretty cool film. And as always, I will see you next time.